Okay, the second um, video for chapter 7 is focused on a couple techniques we use for studying proteins. So the first one is called SDS PAGE, which stands for Polyacrylamide Gel Electrophoresis. And SDS is the name of the detergent. So basically what you're doing is you're taking, in this case since we're talking about membranes, some membrane fragments, and you're solubilizing the proteins with SDS. And I'll show you that in a minute. So you have this mixture of proteins, and you want to separate them for the same reason as you're separating lipid proteins in thin layer chromatography so you can see what is in your sample. And so you add your sample to the top of this gel in something called a well, and you apply electricity. Okay. And the proteins are all going to have a negative coating on them, and I'll show you that in a minute. And so they're going to move towards the positive anode, okay, the positive charge. And what happens is they move and separate based on size. And I don't know why my pen does that every once in a while, but whatever. The bigger proteins move slower. The smaller proteins move faster. So the smaller proteins are at the bottom of the gel and the larger proteins are at the top. And so we always show gels top to bottom. Okay. And looks similar to TLC. You've got these things called bands. Okay, so the bands here are all these dark lines representing different proteins. Okay. But you really don't know the identification of these proteins from SDS page. So let's, let's look at this a little further. Okay. So the SDS part is detergent. And you've read that detergents can disrupt membranes. Okay. Detergents can break weak bonds, break those weak interactions, the secondary and tertiary structures of a protein. When a protein loses its shape, it's called denatured. Okay. And so what happens is the SDS, the detergent, coats the proteins, so it's unfolded, right, and coated, and so now the proteins all have a negative charge, and they're going to separate based on their size. Okay. And you can imagine running through jello. It's going to take the bigger proteins a uh, longer time to go through the jello than the small ones that can wiggle fast. Okay. So, when you do an SDS page, one of the things you have to do is you have to stain the proteins. Proteins don't normally have colors, especially once they're denatured. So, you usually see these as blue or purple. But again, don't focus on the colors or the band shapes when you're identifying. Focus on what we are separating. So SDS page is for separating proteins. And one of your keys is kilodaltons. Which tells you the size of a protein. Okay. So MW stands for molecular weight, and this is a marker. So these are proteins that we know what the size is. <clears throat> Excuse me, and in this case, they had some highly purified samples that they ran on the gel, so you didn't see a lot of bands. But most of the time, you'll see something that looks like this. And you cannot tell 
what these different proteins are in this gel. Okay. You know it's a protein gel because it tells you we're separating things in kilodaltons. So what you really need to do to identify the proteins from an SDS page is something called a Western blot. So this is how we identify proteins. And this is based on using antibodies, which I'm going to draw as a little Y shape. So in unit one, you read about immunofluorescence, where you used antibodies that bound to specific proteins, and you could tag things in a cell and look at their structures or look at where they are in a cell. So we're going to do the same thing with a Western blot. Here we have our proteins separated by SDS page, and then we're going to add antibodies. And the antibodies are going to float around, oops, and they're going to bind to specific proteins. Okay, This is specificity. And they're not going to stick to these other proteins that they're not specific for. The antibodies, just like with immunofluorescence, can either have a color molecule on them, or we use an antibody, and then we use a secondary antibody to amplify the signal that has the color molecule on it. And so the result of a Western blot is something like this. <clears throat> this was the SDS page. This was the Western blot, and it shows you that only samples three and six have the specific protein we're looking at. Okay. Out of all of these bands, out of all of these proteins, here's the one we are looking at. Okay. So, separating things by size, big to little, detecting specific proteins using a Western blot. Okay. The next technique <clears throat> I want you to be sure you understand is hydropathy plots. Okay. So this is where we're predicting a protein's transmembrane regions. Okay. So we're predicting transmembrane regions of a protein. And so it's a computer program that starts looking at the amino acid sequence and it scans down and says, okay, here's a whole group of amino acids that are hydrophobic. And here's a whole group of amino acids that are hydrophilic. And so it plots them and it corresponds to this diagram over here. So what you're seeing is a little bit right here, the end terminus, and then as you go up through this red peak, that's the transmembrane part. And then this is not very hydrophobic, so this is our little linker, and then we have another transmembrane and a little linker, and so these diagrams correlate. And here you have a big hydrophilic region, and that's your C-terminal tail. Okay. When we look at transmembrane regions, they are mainly in a shape of what we call an alpha helice. Uh, alpha helix. Let's do that. Alpha helix. Okay. So it's hard to imagine, but it's trying to show you that these amino acids are in this nice spiral shape. These again are the hydrophobic amino acids. And you could use your table 3-2 to predict transmembrane regions, right? So you look at things with charges or polar, 
and they are going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, on the outside and things that are hydrophobic will be on the inside. Although we can talk about as some of these um, transmembrane regions come close to each other, sometimes they're attracted with hydrophilic sides and hydrophobic sides. We're not going to get into all those details, but it may be something that you read in your text or you hear in Dr. Duncan's lectures. Okay, one more technique for proteins. I think this is super cool, and you will see it on your homework. Lactoperoxidase labeling, sorry, so LP. Lactoperoxidase is an enzyme that can link radioactive iodine, I, whoop, iodine, to proteins. Okay, so I-125 is radioactive iodine. And so if you just look at the top part here in A, basically what you're doing is you're taking a membrane with some proteins in it, you're putting it in a solution of lact lactoperoxidase and I-25, and any proteins that are sticking on the outside of the membrane will get a radioactive label. Okay. The next procedure, which is B and C, what you do is you put the membrane in a hypotonic medium, right, so low water, and that will drive the lactoperoxidase into the membrane. Okay, so it's too big to cross on its own, but in a hypotonic medium, it will go through. You put it back to the isotonic to stop the movement of LP. Rinse it off so you don't have any lactoperoxidase sorry, on the outside. You add I-25, which is so small it can zip right through that membrane. And now everything on the inside of the membrane is labeled. Okay, so that's great. What are we going to do with that information? So what we can do is combine it with the technique we know as SDS page. Right? So say we take samples from labeling A, and we're going to have two proteins labeled, right? We're going to have one big one that represents protein B and one smaller one that represents protein A. B, A. Yeah? Okay. So now we're going to take the samples from this B plus C procedure and we look and we have a protein that's B is labeled. And then we have another protein, we'll just say it's smaller, that's C. Okay. From the combination of this data, you now know that protein B is transmembrane because it was labeled both on the outside and the inside. You know that protein A is on the outside of the cell and that protein C faces the inside of the cell. So a protein that gets labeled in both situations is transmembrane. The other proteins will be either on the outside or on the inside, depending on what circumstances they were labeled. All right, that's the end of this video. I have one more for you. Um, that's going to talk about transition temperatures. Ooh.